Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 109. This episode is with the super fun Bridget Weigel. She is a personal assistant, a guest handler, and a podcaster who's been working in the convention scene for years. If you've ever thought about getting into that kind of work, you are going to love this. We talk about going to her first convention, and then how she got started being a handler for guests. She gives different tips and tricks that she's learned over the years as to what makes for a good and efficient handler, things that you would never think of. She's learned, and she's given up these tips. We talk about her deep love of Sonic the Hedgehog, of course, as well as her new podcast. She and her friend Sydney started a new show called Close Encounters of the A-List Kind, where they talk about their jobs working the convention circuit, and it's so good. It is fantastic. If you've ever wondered about like how conventions are run, behind the scenes, different things like that, highly recommend you check it out. Close Encounters of the A-List Kind. You're going to dig it. So uh, without further ado... Please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, episode number 109 with Bridget Weigel. Theme song time. I can be done now. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So I didn't realize. So you're you're from Florida? Yes, I am. Because I'm in Florida. And oh, yeah. I, so I'm in Naples. Where oh, okay. were you from? So we like bounced around. I did. I lived in like Tampa, South Tampa, Brandon, and then ended up moving to Brooksville, which Ooh. is like a small town. Uh, like an hour north of Tampa. If you know where like Spring Hill and Wikiwachi are. Oh yeah, yeah. Film the movie. In Spring We're right Hill by once. there. We're like their tiny little neighbor. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. I yeah. don't think I know anyone who's from the Tampa area. So actually, I know very few people from Florida. My wife was well, born here, weird. but everyone else is like, <laughs> they are from up north, like myself included. I'm from North oh, yeah. Carolina, but I grew up here. So you're like you were. Oh, I love you North were Carolina. Born here. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> But Tampa. Yeah, I know. Tampa, mm -hmm. not bad. Tampa's nice. It's yeah. not Orlando. Yeah. Which makes it nice. But very real. Very real. <laughs> you I mean, know? I love I love me some universal, but like Yep. Yeah. Orlando is a time. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. <laughs> so you you work the con scene. Yeah. That's a lot of work that uh, uh -huh. people don't see, I feel like. Yeah, they it's it's all like behind those curtains. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So wait a second. So you're telling me you know all the back entrances and the tunnels? I, I do. Oh man, that's rough, oh, Mike. Yeah. So do you do you remember your first con you ever went to? Yeah, the very first one I ever went to yeah. was MegaCon. Oh. In Orlando. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's a good first one. Yep. Huge. Oh, yeah. It was big. Yeah. I was like, oh, wow, there's a lot going on here. This is crazy. I was like, this is a whole new world. Yeah. Can you for your first one, too, man? That's oh, yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah. so you had so, so you had to have been people. into you had to have been into that stuff. Yeah, I uh, stumbled across it specifically, like I said, in my podcast because of Rob Paulson, like I went to meet him. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, oh, he's going to be here. I have to meet him. And then I walked in and I was like, wow, there's a lot of other things <laughs> going on here. <laughs> For real. You're like, wait, there yeah. are others? I was like, there's so many. Yeah. Man, I can't imagine that being. So w what year was that? Do you remember? Oh, like 2012, 2013 or something like that. Oh, yeah. So it was it was big by then. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. My mm -hmm. my first convention was Tampa Bay Comic Con. Nice. But it was in like oh six. And so mm -hmm. it was it was in the lobby of a double tree hotel. Oh there was like hundred and fifty <laughs> people there. And I was like, This is the greatest thing ever. And I was like, There's comics <laughs> and toys and now it's like a conglomerate. Oh I was yeah. Like, Man, it's pretty amazing how much like the convention scene has grown in the last like ten years specifically. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, it just shot up. It's been nuts, and it's so. Mm -hmm. It's. I mean, it's Florida, so there's you know a con, always, 
Yep. Every if weekend, you... <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> and people don't believe me. I'm like, I swear. It's really true. In random, you like... can walk into a library and accidentally stumble upon a convention. You could. I've yeah. seen conventions in libraries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's they're crazy. real. It's crazy. It... I almost started one in my old library. Almost smart, did. smart, almost, <laughs> almost. <Then I> moved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, is there is the convention scene like that anywhere else? Because I know there's like the big ones in other places, but Florida's like any chance we can get to meet and talk about something, let's do it in a parking lot. Yeah, exactly. No, I have not come across any other location that has conventions like Florida has conventions. Nowhere else does that. Really, it's just Florida. <laughs> That kind of makes yeah. sense. With everything else that Florida has going on, you need a respite. <laughs> it really does. We're in the news yeah. all the time for the worst reasons. It's like, <laughs> let's just let's meet at a Taco Bell and talk about Ninja Turtles. Exactly. Yeah. And then and now you have Ninja Turtle Con. <laughs> uh, you do. There there really Ninja is Turtle a con Walker for con. everything. There's Walker yep. Stalker, there's other mm. things. There's <laughs> stuff, you know? Yeah, it's like so it's many. it's almost like podcasting. There's a podcast for everything. There's a con for everything. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Can you That's say that one more time true. so I can get that on record? <clears throat> You're absolutely right. Perfect. I'm gonna put this as my ringtone <laughs> for when my wife calls me. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yes, of course. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> so, I've listened to your show. Everyone should listen to your show because uh, you immediately uh, bumped a few people to the front of my list of like, oh. This is interesting. And so yeah. you got into the con circuit. You met first Rob Paulson. We got to talk about Rob Paulson because Absolutely. what a what a light of a human being, huh? Honestly. Gosh, Man. they call him the mayor of voiceover. Everybody loves him. He's yeah. an angel. Man, yeah. I, I just finished his book uh, like, oh, a, yes. like a month ago. And man, it's like, how can one person be that cool? He's just, he's the best. He I just love does him it. So much. He just yeah. does it. And you met him at MegaCon. And then you're like, yes. oh, so when was there a point when it kind of clicked for you that you're like, I want to work in this? Because it's a conventions is so you're working and you're somebody who's there as a fan. And they're two like night and day experiences in the way that you view the event. Oh, absolutely. So what was it that made you want to like go behind the curtain and be like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to really go for this. Well, uh. The second, so like after Megacon, mm -hmm. there was the little retro turtle weekend at the Nickelodeon Hotel, like two or three months later. Yeah. And Rob was at that again. Of so course. I saw him there again. And Rob was like, you should work cons. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so it, I was like, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> if, so, if somebody came up to me and was like, you should do this, it's like, you know what, Raphael, you're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're. You're telling me I should. That's right. That's right. Pinky, <laughs> absolutely. You're wow. Why didn't I you think know, of that? You, you know best. Yeah. It's, yeah. It just looks into your soul. You're like, you get me. You get yeah, me, Rob understand. Paulson. Yeah. Wow. So how do you even go about something like that? Because normally it's, you know, you start at the bottom. You start as a volunteer doing mm -hmm, like line mm -hmm. control, and then yeah. you kind of work your way up from there. Is that the route that you exactly. took? No, um, because uh, Rob directly was like, hey, I want, I think you would be great as like a handler. And nice. he's like, I'd like to have you at the table with me and stuff or whatever. He introduced me to his convention booking agent and was like, hey, you should show her the ropes of con. And so the agent was like, okay, yeah, sure. And he, and he's, he did, and it was easy enough because there was a bunch of cons in Florida. So he was like, all right, I have people at this one, this one, this one. He's like, just sure. come, I'll tell you how to do it. And that like that December I worked holiday Matsuri and that nice. was my first one ever working. And then that's how it started. <laughs> so have you ever like looked back and thought that like you learned on the job from Rob Paulson? Oh yeah. I think about that all the time. I mean, that's pretty nuts. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I just walked in and <laughs> I just kept saying yes. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's half of it really. You know, yeah. it's like, just, just wing it. And then eventually mm -hmm. you'll be like, oh, I kind of know what this is. Exactly. Yeah. So, I tell people all the time. I was like, I was just winging it. You know? Yeah. Fake it, <laughs> fake it till you make it. That's all I do. This exactly. isn't even a podcast. This is just us talking now. <laughs> oh, great. Like, well, yeah. I'm glad you. I hope it's recording. You know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I have no we'll idea what out. I'm doing. Yeah. At the end. <laughs> at the end, it's either going to be awesome or I'm going to apologize. So it's up in the air. We'll flip the coin. You know. 
Yeah. It's one of the two. So do you remember do you remember what your first day was like then? Um yeah, uh, vaguely. I have a terrible memory sometimes. Same. So Same. yeah. Um I remember Hallmat was still Holiday Mat, sorry, we mm-hmm. call it Hallmat. Well we we <laughs> um, call it Hallmat, but for the listener, yeah. Yeah, holiday. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, just, yeah. I'm still talking about the same guy. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> I remember it was smaller. It was in, it's, it's not in the, ho- it wasn't in the hotel that it's in now. Mm-hmm. It was in the one like up the street. I don't remember what it's called, but I could tell you if I was in Orlando, I could tell you how to get there. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's there. Over, yeah. Like over there. In, over in, there, the, yeah. in the podcasting medium, they can tell where I'm pointing. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. They know exactly. You get it. I got you. They get it. I got you. Yeah. They see the map. Yeah, exactly. Um... <laughs> Come on guys. Keep up. <laughs> <laughs> so... I went and I was like, and it was, so it was quiet. It was like, not like anything. It wasn't as loud and overwhelming as Megacon. So I was like, all right, cool. So it sure. won't be too much at once, I suppose. And I was working with um, George Lowe, Space Ghost. Oh, nice. Yes. And uh, he had like his like personal assistant slash little, like his, his neighbor slash friend slash assistant, like. Buddy was with him, and his name is Jeff, and he has he also he just released an album recently. Oh, um, nice! I, I have it in yeah. Um, but and obviously we've stayed friends since. Um, of course. <laughs> but George lived in lives in Florida, so it was easy for him to go to the Florida Con. Sure. And he was really chill. The convention was really chill. So all of it was like really laid back and just like, this is how things normally go. You do this. You escort them from here to there. It's very easy to learn because everybody was really friendly. Everything was really like relaxed for the most part. Mm-hmm. And the hall mat staff is all wonderful, wonderful people. And so I love them all to this day. And so it was just easy. It was relaxing, actually. Really good weekend to ease into things with. Good good training. Good training yeah, to kind nice, of take like, a breath. Solid, yeah. There you go. Yeah. And, not Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, it wasn't like a trial by fire or anything. Yeah, yeah. I learned later on that, <laughs> yeah. oh, these things can be crazy. <laughs> sure. You're like, wait, what was that thing before? Yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, what about, can't they all be like Hall Matt? What's yeah. going on? <laughs> <laughs> For, it's got to be interesting, especially like, do you know how many conventions you've been to? It's got to uh, be a lot, right? I This past 2019, I did like 15. So, oh, man. That's a, yeah. that's a lot of work. It's a lot of travel. Yeah. So... It is, you know, I was the, my first time on a plane. I was really scared because I thought I was, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got a bit of a fear of heights. So I thought I'd be tr- like terrified to be on the plane. Yeah. And then I loved it. Oh. And now it's like the most mundane thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it happens so fast. <laughs> do you, okay, how do you travel? Like, do you have a system where like, okay, you, like for comfort? Because I always wonder people that are on planes a lot. Like, do you have your like checklist of here is how to travel? Um, I know I have like a checklist for like, you know, like I know the best ways to, mm-hmm. for me, I just pass out the second I get on the plane. Smart, smart. I just, I'm out. I'm in the <laughs> best either, way. Yeah. I'm either using it to catch up on movies I haven't seen or I'm sleeping. Not bad ways to pass time really. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And I like, I, I can time, I, I look at movie times to determine exactly how many movies I can get in during Ooh, my flight time. Smart. I plan it out. Smart. <laughs> I do the same. So there's no lulls. Yeah. And I'm not like getting antsy. <laughs> That's smart. That's smart. Yeah. I do yeah. the I do the same thing. I'm like, movie, ah, I don't have to pay for these. Ha ha. <laughs> exactly. Like, pass the time either on the other side of a movie or a nap, you're in another part of the country. Not bad. Mm-hmm. Where, mm-hmm. Your first flight, where was it to and from? Um, I was leaving uh, Florida. I think flew out of the Tampa airport, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. And I was flying into Salt Lake for Salt Lake City Comic Con. Wow, that's mm-hmm. a that's a long flight for your first time. It was yes. Um, I, but I was so excited for that one. Like I was nervous getting onto the plane. And then once I was on the plane, I was like, "This is crazy! <laughs> this yeah. is cool. I'm flying!" <laughs> I was like, "Wow!" And then so I was just high energy jazz the whole flight so I was, it, it, it went by quickly because i was just sure. so excited the whole time <laughs> that's i mean that's much better than the alternative response yeah you know? i've been like freaking out yeah yeah thank goodness i did not <laughs> i think my first flight was a straight shot from miami to san francisco it was like a six and a half hour flight and it was one of those oh, dang, like yeah. massive planes that's like got seats and then an aisle and then seats and then another aisle and then seats 
Oh yeah. I've never okay. been on one since either. I was like, I, 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 there's a part of me that thinks they don't exist anymore or ever. They do because I, I will, I mean, I've only had like one experience on one as well, uh-huh. but like, I remember like I was people I'd seen, you know, images of these planes, but I'd never been on one. I've been on, I'd been on really tiny planes. I've been on your normal plane. I've been on like bigger, small, whatever. Uh-huh. I felt like I'd been on every size, but I'd never been on the one with the seat style, seat style, seat. Yeah. And then I got, I walked onto one and I was like, Whoa. <laughs> like what is this? <laughs> How the like, other half lives. <laughs> I was like, wow. I'm pretty sure I was flying with Dante. That makes sense. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. But, yeah, but did it really happen? Going. Being that I have one memory of it and you have one memory of it, but then we haven't seen or heard from them since. What if yeah. it was just like a collective dream like we think we did? What if you slept <laughs> through it and thought of it and then you woke oh, up? No. I'm just saying. It's possible. They're like unicorns. Like, did they exist? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. We can't rule out the possibility. But at the same time, when was the last time you saw one? <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? That's exactly what it is. I'm like, I don't know. I think mine was last year sometime. Yeah. Okay. Way more recent. Yeah. Way more recent. Mine was like yeah. 12 years ago. So I can kind of <laughs> pretend it doesn't exist and sort of believe it. Yeah. No, I think mine was just la- I think it was last year. Okay. okay. Everything blurs together. But um, I think it was last year. I'm going to have you be the new authority on the double aisle plane. Um, All right. So if I, if I next time I get into an argument with someone over it, which is pretty frequently, I imagine. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you as my backup. Perfect. I'll, I'll be ready. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Finally. Man, over 100 episodes, and I finally have somebody to get my back on this. <laughs> Sheesh. Happy to be there for you. Thank you. <sighs> I've never heard those words before. Uh, so no. <laughs> you you go to Salt Lake City for your first time, and is there something that you've realized with the growth of cons? Like you said, they're they're done differently, but do you see from the other side kind of like a method in ways that work and ways that don't? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, well, um, there are the conventions. You can always tell whether or not the people who are owning or running the convention, whether the owner is in it for like the love of like the nerd world and like conventions, like they're excited about putting on this show or if they're just like, how do I make the most money? Right. Totally. And you, you there's like a different... It energy behind the curtains like everything's colder and nobody really cares mm. about they're like yeah there's food in there go again whatever Super. sure as opposed to like carrots exactly yeah and being like what did you you know we have this option this option and, you know we have this for people who have food allergies blah, blah blah like as opposed to like that there's like well there's sandwiches on the table right yeah just just grab one from the bucket <laughs> yeah yeah whatever yeah. best of luck to you they're wrapped i think yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's usually with like the bigger conventions where in that sense, if it's a smaller convention, obviously you don't expect them to be able to go all out as far as like their green room goes right. and them having sandwiches. You're like, great, you guys, you provided food for us. Thank you so much. Sure. Cause sometimes you'll go to a, one of the smaller cons and they'll be like, we've got granola bars in the back. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, Oh sweet honey nut. And they're like, no. And you're like, ah, oh, damn it. Okay, uh, yeah. cool. All right. all right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll send somebody on a run. Don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> you know, that'll work. That'll work. And that's, yeah, and it's usually like us. We end up doing those runs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Do, do you have a favorite con? Uh, well, I love Holiday Matsuri because it was like my first, and it's very much like a family group every time we do it. Sure, sure. Um, as so, like as far as like people and like overall vibe, Holiday Matsuri is my favorite, and that's also really fun. It's really the only convention that's very specifically themed. <laughs> right. That is true. That is true. Because mm-hmm. it's all Christmas, and even. Everybody who attends their cosplays are Christmas themed. So it's like, or holiday themed. So yeah, it's like a it's party. Very, yeah, it's very, like, there's nothing off brand. Everything is holiday. That's true. Every little thing. So that's really fun. No other convention actually, like, does that. So that is true. Yeah, I never thought mm-hmm. about that. It's so specific. It's like, you, yeah. it, it, like, it's still a convention where you can have, like, movies, anime, cartoon, everything, but it's mm-hmm. themed. Yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah, I just yeah. never thought about that. Yeah. I I was go- so I did uh, a bunch of years ago. I did a year where I was the cabbage merchant from Avatar. Beautiful. Thank you. Our, our Thank man. you. Our and man. actually, when you hear the theme song of this show, it has my cabbages in it. Oh um, my gosh! Yes. <laughs> and so I it stemmed from I did this uh, I did this costume one time, and I didn't know that anyone was gonna know who I was. Um, I was wrong, mm-hmm. and um, oh yeah, 
it went well. So then I built a cart as well. So I had the cart with me everywhere. Yes. And I always thought that one day I would go to Holiday Matsuri and I would have a Christmas theme. Like all the cabbages would have little Santa hats. There'd be Christmas lights oh along the cart. And I was like, that'd be pretty oh good. God. Never did it. I'd but, cry. You know, just know <laughs> what almost was. I would have loved it. I would have cried. Yeah, now we know. You. I would have so, taken photos with you. It would have been a whole thing. Well, the past, you know. Free idea for yeah. anyone listening. If you want to do that. <laughs> People really Please. like that costume. <laughs> the cabbage merchant is the best. <laughs> it is. It is. It uh. It, it caught on. It spun this podcast. Uh, so that happened. Oh, beautiful. And then beautiful. I was going to do uh, the cabbage merchant, but he had like green arrow tattoos and he'd be the cabotar. Um, didn't do that either. <laughs> didn't do that either. Wow. So many gold ideas. I know. I, I'm just throwing them You've out been here. Robbed. Enjoy, guys. Uh, Enjoy. Oh, my gosh. Have them. I'm going to have to tell all of Dante's fans. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It works. You want to make people smile, just carry some cabbages and start screaming. It works. <laughs> it's really real. <laughs> so, maybe, specifically in a convention setting, if you're out in like the middle of a store doing it, maybe not. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Listen, I have a story. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm that guy, so I had real cabbages, oh so yes. what I would do is, on the way to the convention, I would stop by like a Publix or something, and then I would buy a few cabbages, right? And one time, mm -hmm. I got dressed beforehand, and then went to Publix, and oh so I'm God. dressed as the cabbage merchant, I walk up to the produce section, I'm picking up these cabbages and looking at them, and this guy is stocking the shelves at the time, and he looks over at me, he smiles, and he goes, Nice. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. So I think about that all the time. Like that guy, what it must have been like to be like, yeah. I was, so I was stocking the shelves, and I think I saw the cabbage merchant buying cabbages from Publix. I was like, yeah. me and that guy are forever Mistress connected. <laughs> yeah, cabbage merchant doesn't grow his own cabbages. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I got my own Bill Murray moment where I could just look at him and be like, no one will ever believe you, and then just yeah. walk away. Would have been great. So good. It, so what is something from your side of it that is a like a common misconception of conventions? Because I'm sure you've heard it all. Oh, um, a common misconception. Well, um, it's not like the walking through the back hallways of places isn't glamorous. Yeah. <laughs> You're telling me there's not <laughs> elevators that are made of gold? No, it's usually pretty gross. <laughs> it usually smells pretty bad back there. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing and like if you're walking through it yourself like you have to run back for something mm -hmm. it's a little scary i bet i bet you're never sure like you're like i'm gonna make a wrong turn and i'll never make it out of here yeah <laughs> they will find my corpse that's in right. the corner of this hallway you, there's no signal back there just to add to it you're like you can't oh. you can't call for help either yep this is the end you yep. always Hilarious. accidentally stumble upon like groups of employees taking their break <laughs> Ooh. and they're always like well who are these people <laughs> that's so like, sorry funny. you gotta it, go a, and it does uh, yeah it does feel like you know going into those service elevators like we're cattle or something oh i bet yeah they just gotta funnel you in yep and we're all just sitting in this giant steel or whatever box <laughs> that's gotta be a pretty interesting moment from someone who's like a fan of things to be in an elevator you're like oh we're just people, but, like, I know these people. This is strange. Yeah, well, usually, like, if it's at the, the back, we use, um, uh, like, the, uh, whatchamacallit, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Airlift, golf cart, jetpack, um, <laughs> skateboard. Um, no, like, the, horses. Uh, the, no, the, the, like, those giant elevators, like, the, the um, service elevators. Service elevators, thank you. I was gonna we use there. those. Almost exclusively because, like, usually the hotel elevators or the convention elevators are tiny. And, like, if we're smushed, we're trying to get people in and out fast and we're crowded in with all these fans. I'm sorry about the airplane if you can hear it. No, you're good. Okay. That, that makes sense. You can get more. And then it's also more private. So, like, you're not waiting in the hallway exactly. for the. That makes sense. Yeah, because people will usually, like, mob if they're like, oh my gosh. That's true. And then we can't get away from the elevator. And Ooh, there's usually boy. so many people by the elevators in general that it's just we can't get to places quickly. So sure. we use those giant service elevators in the back, and it's like that grates closing. Yeah. In front of you, and you're like, well, <laughs> Is we this are it? the merchandise now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make peace with it all as the gates are closing. Yes. That oh, is wow. hilarious. Yep. And those never smell good either. It's very rare. I can imagine. 
I mean, Many the services so. yeah. provided by those things are not the best, I'd imagine. It, so yeah. is there a convention center that you think has the best, like, secret grid, like, easiest to navigate? Hmm. Yeah. Didn't think you'd ask that one, did you? No. Yeah. The best convention center for navigation. Huh. I know. I know. That's a, that's a tough one. Thank I you. Well, because, because of all the cons in Florida, I know that I know that one best. Right. I know like the Orange County convention and then the one across, like I'm the most familiar with that one. Right. And like, especially like at home at, I have all the hotels memorized now, right. but um, in general, the Salt Lake is so well run overall Yeah. that it's really easy. And they have like professional, uh, like uh, professional, like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Guards, employees. Uh, yeah, like ninjas, guards, um, uh, security, security. That's uh-huh. what specifically. Yeah, they have like professional security escort you everywhere. Oh, so smart. You don't ever have to worry about like getting lost in the back alleyway. So it's always very easy to navigate at Salt Lake because everybody there is just on point. <laughs> right. It's almost like you don't have to navigate it. Yeah, you which don't. is smart. And mm-hmm. yeah, a lot they of have whole teams. Mm-hmm. I like that. They, they're the best run convention. Salt Lake's the nicest on our side, like behind the scenes. Yeah, so, really. So clean, so nice, so well done. That's cool. The green room is a dream room. <laughs> hey, I like it. <laughs> I like it. I've only yeah. heard amazing things about Salt Lake. They yeah, got like really the best great. guests, the best panels. It's like one of the best shows from what I've heard. Yeah, it's amazing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wanted that because I, I, I was at McCormick Place last year, and oh boy, did I get lost. I was like, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't good. They're like, you're in the wrong wing. I was like, there are wings? And it's, <laughs> uh, it was an experience. But yeah, within, like, from sizes as well of convention centers and stuff, I can imagine that having to go through, like, certain areas that are different than just the hallways that the rest of us are in, yeah. the, the possibility of getting lost and never found is probably a little higher for you guys. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Especially if like there's not like a staff who knows the back way and like we're like we're pretty sure we remember coming this way. Right, right. So this we'll go looks back. <laughs> familiar, maybe. Yeah, like we think this is the same way we came, so we're just gonna backtrack and hopefully make it. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll find it eventually. Yep. <laughs> Either by <laughs> your own or the cops finding you. <laughs> exactly. You know, there's, there's options. I mean, luckily you're at uh, like a a specific location, you know, yeah. so you know it's it's, it's there somewhere. Yeah. You know, you'll get there eventually. Unless you end up outside. You know where you still are. (laughs) That's true. That's true. I'm in Chicago, I think. (laughs) Hopefully. Yeah. Found a tunnel, may have crossed into the next state. Not sure. Yeah, for real. (laughs) (laughs) My goodness. It's so, it's interesting as well, like, the idea of a convention. And, like, Mm -hmm. I I can't even imagine having to run a show. Like, all the different plates that you're spinning and trying to get scheduling alone with like times has got to be a real pain oh yeah that's why they have to have teams and teams if each designated like you've got your head person who has everybody underneath them in charge of different sections and those people have somebody underneath them in charge of even smaller sections it's very goodness yeah that's a lot of work and then each guest has their own team as well it's like man there are hundreds of people putting on these things oh yeah Ooh, yeah, man. Have, so many, yeah. have you been? What What's your favorite convention to go to as a fan? Do you have one? Um, as a fan, oh, I haven't. It's so really, work now, you know. Yeah, exactly. Even and I don't even know how to attend conventions as a fan anymore <laughs> because I walk in and I immediately like, do you need help with something? Right. Like, like, I where's don't the service elevator? They're like, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. You have a Sometimes general admission. Sometimes we do sneak through the back ways just because we're like <laughs> impatient. And we're like, well, I bet you I can figure my way through here. There you go. Walk confidently. Yeah. No one will stop you. Exactly. But that's very true. I did that in a hospital <laughs> is... once. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> we have friends of us, our other fellow handlers, one of our girls, she's done that before. She literally just walked right into a convention all the way to the back to us. That's amazing. And we were like, how did you get here? She's like, I just walked in. Yeah. Right. She's like, I walked <laughs> with a purpose. She's like, and nobody questioned me. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, right on. <laughs> it works. It works. It really does. And especially if, like, in the case of, like, at a convention, you know the way around, people are like, well, obviously she's been back here before. <laughs> like, Right. Don't The key is don't look around. 
You know oh, what yeah. I mean? The second you look in a direction that isn't where you are walking, they're like, they don't know where they are. Get out of here. Yeah, like, what are you doing? Do you need help? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like you can always you tell a tourist in a big city because they're looking up at the buildings. Oh, yeah. You know? Exactly. It's, just, it's a sheer sign. If you're going to rob someone, those are the ones to go for. Yep. That wasn't on around. record. No, but... yeah, it didn't hear anything. <laughs> There's so, an airplane again. I yeah, don't... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's just. It's kind of, it's kind of... So you've been, you said 2012 or so when you started. So you've been doing this for a long time. Mm-hmm. Goodness gracious. Been... Yeah. Is there, have you noticed any changes in the growth of the convention scene? Um. Like in the job, at least, as to how you started to how it is now? Well, when I guess when we started um, more... There were less, as far as like handlers go, there were less people who like actively knew what they were doing and weren't like super nervous about being like with like a guest, you know, mm-hmm. like a celebrity or whatever. Sure. Um, and now everybody's, I feel like every convention sort of gotten into a groove. They're like, okay, we need to definitely have this, this and this done. Like early on when we started, like having extra Sharpies was like, Oh, does anybody anywhere have extra Sharpies? But now it's like, we always have extra Sharpies. Ah. Like nobody goes anywhere. It's like little things, like very little things that you wouldn't normally think of now are like very, like we have lists. And like, as far as like me and like the, our little girl group of handlers go, Mm -hmm. we've made like a list of very specific items that like different clients have asked us for over the years. The list is mainly comprised of things that Dante has asked for over the years. That makes sense. Because he's very... He's very specific and he's like the most random thing. So he'll just be like, do you have a Tide pen? <laughs> and we're like, uh, <laughs> no, but we're going to add that to the list for next time just in case. That's right. Now you're like, what color? <laughs> and you have like four. Yeah, yeah exactly. That makes so. sense. Mm-hmm. So what What do you, for people that don't know, what is a handler? Like what do, what do they do? What is the job of a handler? A handler is um, the person who is like the right hand of the guest or client and they escort them to like panels they need to get to, to their tables, and they manage the table for the signings. So like the handler is the person who like sets it up and like they'll, they'll be the ones taking the money and like, oh, what, do you, what can I get you with this? Okay. And they're usually like, they'll take the photos at the table if that client does that or whatever. And it's just, you're like a little personal assistant for the weekend. Whatever they need, it's your job to take care of. Aha. Uh-huh. So then what is something that you, like, what makes a good handler? Like what to, to like stand out for anybody that like wants to be a handler? What are some pro tips that are like, oh, do this and you'll be handler plus one? <laughs> so one of the things we say is like, even if you like are a fan of the person, don't be a fan. Like don't fangirl over them Smart. while you're working with them. Smart. Because it's supposed to be like a professional, like keep it calm, keep it whatever. Right. Professional. Treat them blah, like blah, a person. <laughs> exactly. Treat them like a person. Don't treat them, you know. You're their safe person for the weekend, so try not to overwhelm them with anything. Right, right. Don't and don't bring them the like shrine that you have. Be like, look, hey, exactly. Can you smell like, this? Yeah, like, hey, I know I just met you, but can you sign my entire body? Thank yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get it tattooed at lunch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll come back with a fresh tattoo. Don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> you wait till the last day for that. You yeah, know? they're like, hey, is it okay if you just wait on it? <laughs> <laughs> can you sign my face? Yeah, just before you go. Yeah. <laughs> Farewell. That's a way of saying I did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and in, yeah, like, and just being like there, like. Sure. Pay attention. Very present. Very, um, do you need anything? Do you need to take a break? Like have their schedule, like know their schedule, know where you're going. Even before they get there, if they, whoever you're working with, the convention, whoever provides you like schedule, if they, they get it to you ahead of time, make sure you know. That's smart. Before anything, because if like like they turn to you and they're like, "Where are we supposed to be now?" and you're like, "I don't know." They're yeah. like, well, "Why are you here?" <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, they're like, "Well, I'm, I don't know." So you know, you have to just know everything as much as you can ahead of time. Know where you're going. Um, make sure you have extra supplies on you just in case. Like we always have extra sharpies on us, extra hand sanitizer. We carry sticky notes. Oh, um, nice. Because mm-hmm. sometimes it'll be like if, especially if like the line like a really big line mm-hmm. and you're trying to funnel people through quickly. Um, you'll be like, just to keep track of who got what. So when they get to the person, they don't get like free things out of it. They don't like lie about what they paid for. Right. Um, you give them a sticky note that says what they got. So the person, the client, the guests, they know what they're giving the person. 
Oh. And sometimes like their names, if they have like a name and it's like spelled a very special way, if you're writing it down ahead of time and the client can just look at it and know, and it doesn't take up as much time. That makes sense. That mm-hmm. makes sense. I'm a big fan of efficiency. Yeah. yeah. So stuff like that. Sometimes people will be like, oh, it's fine. I, I'll ask them how to spell their name. Like, cause I like having that interaction. Yeah, so it yeah. always depends on like your client. Uh, we always recommend asking them how they prefer their line to be run. If there's anything specific they like you want you to do. Sure. And then do do that. Adapt to how they want their line run. That's and pretty be cool. Nice to your fellow fans. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah like, there's stories. You don't mm-hmm. want to be the be, opposite. Exactly. Like be super friendly, as friendly as you can with the fans, but also like if somebody's stepping a line, you have to be the bad guy. Right. Like yep. it's your job to be like the friendly face they see first, but also like the law. Right. Right. You also have to protect your client. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to be like, you, hard no if it's a no, and stop people like, you are also the bad guy. <laughs> sure. That's a, yeah. that's a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. Man, I feel... It's I a didn't... very involved weekend. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet a lot of people don't know that about the handlers. You think they're just like a person that's like, all right, cool, you want this, and like exchange the money and the ticket for the autograph, but I, I bet a lot of people don't know about like how much responsibility there is outside of just that. Yeah, it's like a it's a glorified babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean you're kind of right. Yeah, and I I never would have thought about something. that either. Like knowing mm-hmm. where to go ahead of time, because you know you just your first time. I bet you just don't think of it. You know, you're like yeah, I'm, no. I'm at the table. That's my job. Because yeah, but if you need to get them to a panel, you don't want to be the reason they're late. Yeah, because you're like, oh, I don't know where any of the panel rooms are. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot mm-hmm. of work. It is. And yeah. you signed up for it. <laughs> I know. You know, <laughs> I was like, let's do it. It'll be great. Sure. And I, I love doing it. I have a blast doing it. Are you the like, like super organized personality? Like you can kind of handle stuff. Is that where you like it? For the, yeah. You know, I, uh, I, it depends on certain things. Yeah. Like, like I'm very organized and such when I'm dealing with like other people, like I'm handling other people's things. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but like I'm, with my own stuff, it's a little chaotic. There's no real rhyme or reason, but I get it. Sure. <laughs> it has to even out. You know, you can't yeah. be that way all the time. Exactly. Yeah, I understand. My my wife is a nurse and she has one of those brains that like has to be engaged, you know, so she picked like the most intense profession ever. But she just thrives because that's how her brain works. Yeah. Yeah. She was like, this is what I need. Exactly. Like, keeps me on track. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's crazy though. I never realized there was that much, like, responsibility. That you have so you have so many jobs as yes. a handler. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, I was like, okay, you get like this is your post. You stay at your post. This is what you do. But you're like, oh no, oh no. You here's your packet of all the responsibilities that you're going to have. Wow. Yeah, good exactly. good on you and all the handlers out there. Well, wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. I already had respect, but now it's uh, on the awe side of it. No, oh, thank you. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. You, know, you know what else is amazing? Uh, so you have a YouTube channel. I do, yes. <laughs> that I'm also a pretty big fan of. I like vlogs a lot because I've tried it, and it's yeah. very difficult. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Like, it is. Talking to the camera part, one, there's a specific thing. There's a, there's a way that you have to do it, right, to where it's interesting mm-hmm. for a viewer as well. But, like, the other side of making an edit of a video that is essentially an episode of TV, yours, they're amazing. Uh, yeah. Oh, but thank you. It's great. It's like that's another thing I have so much respect for the hustle because you do that on top of everything else, and it's good. So well thank done. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, I learned on the fly this past year. That's crazy. <laughs> so what? What made you want to do that? Because that's just more work. Yeah, you know. So Dante, uh, since I'm his personal assistant, he wanted me to start helping him edit like videos for his stuff. Oh, smart. And I've never done like edit video editing before. And so he was like, well, why don't you start vlogging? And he's like, and then you can kind of teach yourself how to edit as you vlog. And the more you do it, you can get a sense of like what your own style is and you be able to just become easier for you. Oh. And then, you know, so I did a, a, one single vlog a month. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at him and his ideas. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a brilliant man. It worked out. Mm-hmm. It worked out. So it's it's a good channel. Yeah. What so what did you what do you edit on? What's the software? Um, I have a MacBook and I do the Final Cut Pro X. Nice, nice. And whatever. Yeah. And you just taught yourself. You just threw yourself in. Look at this. I did. Look at this. Yeah. I'm seeing an MO here. 
<laughs> yeah, it's very real. <laughs> Man, so what was harder, to learn how to edit videos or to learn how to be a handler? I think the handler maybe, but just because there's far more moving pieces and other personalities to deal with than video editing. Ooh, that's a good point. That's a good yeah. point. What what kind of camera do you use? Um, I just use my phone. What? Really? Yeah, my, yeah I have the like the iPhone 11, and that's what. Yeah. I mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to switch to iPhone. I know that's what you're trying to do here, but <laughs> it no, looks no, good. No, no, I would never. It looks I, good. I never push. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Samsung now has that flip phone again. Do you see that? I did see that. I what like, is up with that? That's specifically marketing to Dante. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He wants one. <laughs> oh, he loves the flip phones. He talks about it all the time. How would you put and a I case on it? I was like, wow, it? they heard you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. They have to. They have to develop very specific cases. You know, phone. that's what I'm wondering because I am rough on my phones. I mean, I get oh, otter boxes on them, and I break the otter boxes. Like, oh, see, I haven't done that. Oh man, it, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend yeah. it because the it's got I I have the like Defender case, which yeah. is like the shell with the rubber outside. Yep, and that rubber is wrecked. Oh, I destroyed it. It was like barely oh. hanging on. So I had to buy a new one. But right. I, then I saw the flip phone. I was like, okay, I remember the Razor. Mm -hmm. I remember really, really wanting the Razor. But now oh, yeah. I know how destructive I can be. So I look <laughs> at that phone. I was like, that's really cool. It looks like a, it looks like a, uh, like a Game Boy SP. You remember those? Yes. It yeah. looks like that. But it I was does. like, how would you? <laughs> How would you save it from when I drop it a hundred times? Ha I feel like it would have to be like one of those like two, two parter cases. Yeah. To... It's gotta be right. Yeah. You, there's no way to. It's crazy. Flip one on there. <laughs> it's crazy. What a weird thing to do. But at the same yeah. time, you can't deny it. It's pretty no. cool. People like, like that flip phone. Dante says it's a satisfaction of hanging up on somebody. You just click. That is true. It's a power move. Yeah. They don't He's get like, it, but you sure do. I'm to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get one just to call people to hang up on them. Yeah. Be like, hey, I just wanted to quit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Power. That's Beautiful. amazing. So yeah. then uh, you now have your own show. I, I, yeah. It's very good. Again, as I said before, you uh, you. you host it, co-host it with uh, yes. your friend Sydney. Yes. Who is also amazing. You guys just... It's just, it's so cool. I love, I love learning about people mm -hmm. and hearing their stories and getting to know them and connect with them on a human level, which is the whole purpose of my show. Um, yeah. So when I saw yours, it's, it's just such a look into something that like we haven't seen before in a world where literally everyone has a podcast. It's hard <laughs> to find something that's different. Right. And y both of your stories are very, very different and the show's really good. So I have technical questions first. How do you record? Like, what what is your setup? How does how does that how does that go? So I have my Mac, right? Uh huh. And I turn on that voice memo. What? And um, I have a mic, like a Blue Yeti mic. Oh yeah, yeah. And I put it in the middle of a table, and Sydney and I sit on either side of it, and we talk to each other. <laughs> wow, wow. That's it. We have the bare minimum. <laughs> I mean, it works. It works. I've literally got a USB mic that I hold and it's plugged into the laptop and that's it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. What did, what did you think of it? Had you done a podcast before? Had you been thinking about it for a while? Like how's the experience been? Um so I'd never done one before. Um and we could like talked about it like a, like for maybe a couple months before we finally were like, yeah, let's sit down and we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then we just did it. Like I wrote notes I had like a basic outline idea in my head. So I like wrote notes for it and then like came up with like the Patreon stuff, whatever. I had all the math and then we recorded. Wow. Wow. And what do you think? Did you like it? Oh yeah. We had a blast. It's fun, it right? Fun. Oh yeah. So much fun. And it's I was just, like, oh, this it, is great. It's a good thing to have as well. Like with a buddy, you know what I mean? Yeah. To kind of jump mm -hmm. in with it. Yeah. And, and you both are doing cool stuff. It's neat. Yeah. And we live together. So it's really easy to uh, schedule. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. You know where to find her. if She tries to jump. Yeah, you know, we just wake up. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, let's, let's sit down and record the podcast. Exactly. So just smack her, be like, "Listen," and then there's a mic in front of her. Yeah. Yep. There we are. I understand. I understand. Mm -hmm. So, who came up with the name? So initially, I like when I was just sitting down one day, and I was like, "Los Encounters of the Celebrity Kind" came to my head. Just random. And then she was like, 
I don't think we should use the word celebrity because it sounds like a little, <laughs> she's like, I don't like the word celebrity. And then so she came up with A-list kind. I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. It's a good name. It was just literally just like a random moment of, there it is. <laughs> Lightning in a bottle. Yeah. See, another thing that it will set you apart from everybody else is a good title. You know. Thank you. I'm very, I'm very excited about that title. I'm very. You should be. Very happy. Yeah. It's, it's a great title, and also it kind of like gives you an idea of what you're about to listen to, which I think is also kind of important when you're yeah, listening exactly. to a show. You yeah. Know, it's it's almost like you understand how things can be promoted. Huh. Yeah. Weird. A little bit of an idea. Yeah. I okay. like it though. It's a great idea. Is it? Is this going yeah. to be another thing like your YouTube channel where you're thinking a monthly or? Yeah, it's going to be monthly because right now that's basically all we have time to pull off. Yeah, yeah. It's the once a month. <laughs> For sure. That's, yeah. a, that's another thing that's kind of funny. I feel like most people that work in any sort of avenue of like, I don't know if entertainment is the right word, but I guess it kind of is. Anything yeah, like that. Is. It's like It's like we all have this like massive tank like in monsters inc you know the scream tanks except mm -hmm. it's just like energy and drive where we're like you know yes. what sleep is 100 percent optional it i really could do is. more mm -hmm. i could totally do more i should do I that yeah and you're I'm doing it, it. yeah which is not bad so how many conventions you said you did 15 last year last year yeah good lord is that the most you've ever done in a year i think so yeah 2019 was a heavy one. Oh man Mm -hmm. Did you, what was the farthest you flew? Um, I've gone as far as like Canada. I haven't gone overseas yet for a con. Okay. Okay. Not but bad. That's on my list. Yeah. If you're doing 15, so that means you were doing more than once a month. How did yeah. you survive doing more than one convention a month? <laughs> um, you know, uh, vitamin C is great to ah, have on hand. Smart. Yeah, I always I always have vitamin C on me no matter where I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, emergency and like just yeah. Yeah. water all the time. Lots of water. How often do you get sick? Um, not as much as I used to. I pre I think I've mastered it. Like there until even the slightest tickle in the back of my throat, I'm like, Oh, double up. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Quick. Get, get the IV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, Cause, yeah, that's Thanks. another thing I wonder is people that are constantly going and going and going. Um, mm -hmm. Like, one, when do you sleep? Because I don't sleep. Uh, you know, there's too much to do. Uh, and mm -hmm. then also, how do you, on no sleep, always running, keep from getting sick? And when you get sick, what do you do? Because it's got to be, uh, on top of the other stresses that the job just comes with, to have to deal with that as well is like, why not? Let's just throw it oh, over yeah. the top. It's like, sure. Um I, so I, I can, I have a sense of like, if I'm like, if it's just like, I'm tired and it's just like an exhaustion sickness, it's not really anything I have to go to the doctor for, or if it's something I need to go to the doctor for. Oh. So if I like wake up in the morning and I'll be like, ah, I'm going to make a run and see if I need antibiotics. And then by the end of the day, I have my antibiotics and then I go home and I just like tea and honey, water, vitamin C, and just have my, and I don't put as much energy out like i am a subdued work <laughs> sure sure and then i actually make sure i go to bed at like a decent time like I, I make myself sleep because i know that's the best way to heal you're so preemptive mm -hmm. yeah i'm very <laughs> i've learned now yeah <laughs> because there are especially after a convention weekend because there are convention weekends where we may not actually sleep like more than like an hour a night sometimes oh man yeah, there are some, like, depending on where we are, what group we're with, like, sometimes we're just out, like, the whole time. And right. There's, like, no sleep really happening. It's just, like, Party. you, like, take a nap, shower, and go back out to it, you know? Right, right. So, coming back, you got to kind of have at least, like, a day of, like, nothing yeah. <laughs> ready for yourself, and then you can kind of ease back into things. I hope to God you didn't get con crud. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I usually do. I take vitamin C while I'm out there, con. Oh, then, yeah. Look at you killing mm -hmm. the game. Oh, yeah. Every morning. So what what kind of advice would you have to somebody who wants to get into your kind of work? Um, Definitely as far as we tell, because obviously like Sydney and I's story getting into conventions is very unconventional. <laughs> right. <laughs> I uh. like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but like, 
basically you have to go you have to volunteer submit your applications go to the cons meet people make friends with the staff like you just have to keep volunteering and yeah. just network you know yeah network this is so important yeah That's like cool. it really really is who you know and who you like become friends with very big part of it is having like the friends to like back you up and be like oh no yeah they were great sure you definitely hire them they'd be wonderful with this it's all connections. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it works that way in like Very pretty much. much every facet of the entertainment industry and most industries, I'd imagine. Yeah, like, it's honestly. all just and making them. Exactly. The more you like do, the more you're like, oh, it really does boil down to who I managed to make nice with. Yeah, for real. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to be somebody that people want to work with. Exactly, because that's half of it. If they don't like, you could be great, but if you're an asshole, like nobody's gonna really want to work with you. It's true. It's mm-hmm. true because they're spending a lot of time. Yeah, and they may put up with it for so long, yeah. <laughs> but eventually it doesn't last. <laughs> That's right, and then that bridge is burned. Yep, done for. And what would be something that like would be, like I don't know if caution is the right word, but like something to expect that you might not be expecting going into this. Um, it is work. Like yeah. it's not just <laughs> fun. Like it's like it seems it is a lot of fun. We do have a lot of fun, but it is very much work. Like you do have to be serious. Like you can't just kind of like goof off and hope things will be fine. Like you do have to be very present, very serious. And you will have to like you do have to bow to other people's like wishes. Right. Like you're not your own boss in this scenario, especially as like a handler. Like you have to make sure that that client is happy, but you also have to make sure like the convention is like you're kind of like the peacekeeper. So, like, you will have to deal with, like, certain people might be a little bit more difficult of a client to work with, like, a little bit pickier. Mm -hmm. And, like, you have to find ways to navigate, like, if they get upset about something not going their way and how to, like, deal. Like, just be prepared to – you can't lose your mind over something. Like, you have to be, like, calm. That is great advice. Yeah. Because there's no – and that's the other thing is, like, one of my favorite adages that I've learned over the show is, like, a dream job is still a job. Yeah. You know, and there's that side of it where from the other side of the curtain, you're looking at it and there's this person you're a fan of and you're, you're getting that fan experience, but you don't realize Mm -hmm. the business side of it and the work involved to give you that experience that if you decide to jump the veil, it's going to be very different than what you (laughs) saw from your point of view. Exactly. Interesting. I think that's a good thing for people to know, like just in general, you know, mm -hmm. if somebody like gets, like if somebody's getting upset about something, you can't also get upset in response. Like you have to be able to right. level it out. You got to be a like good, don't clash good peacekeeper. With everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Learn how Try to like navigate to egos fight. while also checking your own. Exactly. It's very much that. <laughs> Man. A lot of egos bouncing around at conventions. Yeah. Oh yeah. For real. <laughs> For real. My goodness. There's there's an underbelly. Mm-hmm. And then I can't have you on the show and not talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> okay, because I am also a massive Sonic the Hedgehog fan. I'm really excited for the movie. <gasps> oh yes, it's gonna so, be so, so good. Excited. It looks oh, so be... good, right? It does, and I'm gonna be so emotional because I love Jim Carrey also, and he's same. Like, I can't. I'm just beside myself. Same, <laughs> same, same, same. It's gonna be so fantastic. I can't wait. Oh can't yes, wait. The... tomorrow. Ben Schwartz. Tomorrow. Oh, you seen it tomorrow? <gasps> yes. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be the best. It's gonna. Oh, can't wait. Do you think we'll get cameos? You know, I don't know. I don't either. But I'm I kind of sure. like I kind of hope we do, but also I kind of hope we don't. It's like I don't know. I'm spoiled, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, I don't know. It would be very interesting to see how they do it overall. Yeah, like is Sonic Like the trailers be an alien, have been like, you know, kind of like like what exactly is the story of this yeah. <laughs> yeah. on earth thing? Like they haven't really like nothing's been exposed in the trailer like what they see him as other than like fascinating like that's is true. It an alien is it another what are we doing you know how are yeah, we who knows curious how they do that agreed and like how he's how he's on earth by himself also like how let's talk about this yeah that's what i want to know and also how many sequels are we gonna get because we need them yes haven't even seen it yet but i just know i uh, yeah there's gotta be they and, have to and ben schwartz the voice sounds so perfect he says it's so cute i so just good. love it i can't wait i know i can't Me neither. wait i <laughs> love the so. cartoons growing up me too. Sega Game Gear. We got Sonic Underground is a little scary. That's true. 
That's true. It's a little, it hurts a little bit. I a have friends bit. on that show, and I still am like, you know, it was something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, Sonic is in it. Yep. He's there. That's the thing. And his, his, his siblings are also voiced by Urkel. Isn't They're that crazy? Urkel. Even the girls, Urkel. Yeah. <laughs> They're all Urkel. <laughs> It's like it's and like they, being John Malkovich, but the animated Sonic version. <laughs> yeah, and they they're trying to sing. They yeah, try to. yeah. That's yeah. the thing that they attempt to do often. It's, unfortunately. Do you do you remember the day you found out that Sonic was voiced by Urkel? Because I sure do. <laughs> oh, I definitely do. <laughs> I was like, we did what? <laughs> yeah. He, hold on. They're the the same the same. <laughs> Like, man. You're telling me this kid yeah. is Sonic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if, oh, if you oh. think I didn't try to get him on my show, you are dead wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. Absolutely. One day. Mm. One day. But no, I think it looks great. I'm really excited about it. Love Jim yeah. Carrey. Uh, yes. Tails is my boy. Um, Little baby. Don't they love Tails too? He's the best out of all. I, I just found out. His name means miles per hour like six years ago. And I was like, I'm a grown man. How did I not Come know this on, before? Come on, miles per hour. Right? Yeah, I was like, yeah, you, you know miles per hour. I know, I know. <laughs> you didn't catch it. Did, for 20 years, I didn't catch it. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I know. I was a grown man. And I was like, yeah, you know miles per hour. And I was like, oh, <gasps> <laughs> miles <laughs> per hour. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, it's been right there. I found out I was the last person on the planet uh, to, to learn that. <laughs> Uh, and, and uh, like, uh, I remember as a kid, I loved Sonic so much that like, I told my parents, I was like, I'm gonna write a book, and they're like, Oh, okay, good, good. I was like, Yeah, about Sonic, and they're like, Okay, <laughs> you like Sonic, you should. So what I did was I took, like at the time, Wikipedia, and mm-hmm. I printed out like 16 different characters from like Mr. Bean to like <laughs> all all of them, even the obscure ones. I printed oh, out their God. pages. And then I made a title page, and then I just stapled it all together, and I was like, "This is my book." <laughs> <laughs> like this is it. Yes, welcome, Sonic the Hedgehog, by Brian Ballance. Yeah. <laughs> like, did you write all this? I was like, I put it together. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I, did, I did print it out and staple it. Man. That's that was right, me. Sonic that super was... fan. Here we go. Oh, uh, I actually wrote <laughs> Sonic fan fiction. What? Like full blown, like full complete stories. That is amazing. Oh yeah. Is Sonic your favorite character? He is. He's my boy. I really like those sarcastic little yeah speedy shit shitheads. You know. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. I mean, the it. little snarky. The, the the I love it. I love it. The Flash is always like my favorite superhero too. Uh, Ooh, there was a theme. nice, nice. Yeah. Gotta go fast. You I, gotta. I, I get it. Like the speedsters. I don't know. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Man, and just like yeah. that. We've been talking for an hour. Look at that. Wow, flies by. Boom. Yeah, that's what I like to hear, as opposed to <laughs> peace out. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, thank God, I got to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, oh, I've cut out endings before. And I was like, yeah, i was uh, been looking at the clock for a little while. I'm, I'm hungry. And I'm like, oh, all right. Thanks for coming on. See you later. But, My bad. Yeah. But before I let you go, I have to ask, uh, where can people find you online? Where can they find your podcast? Talk to me. I can be found on just about every social platform at the Bridget Moya, and Bridget's going to be spelled B R I G I T T E M O Y A for Moya. Yeah. And so I'm everywhere at those. Um, the podcast is going to be since we can't write out Close Encounters of the A List kind for yeah. everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's on most. It's on Twitter, Instagram, and we have a Facebook page, and on almost all of the podcast listening, the major ones. Under uh, it's and on the pod when you're looking up the podcast, type out Close Encounters of the Alien. Yeah, <laughs> but for socials, it's C E A K podcast. Love it. Eek. Look at that! Look at that SEO you got going on. Yeah, you know, you got here. I'm into it. <laughs> Check it out. It's amazing. Thank you. And.
show, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.